Hello and welcome to the second video in this series looking at data visualization using Tableau Public Eyes. Here we're going to look at how bubble plots work in TPAs. Like histograms, they can be done in Excel, but the Tableau Public method is easier and frankly easier to understand. We'll also look at how to use a pages shelf to make your data presentation dynamic. Bubble plots are a type of scatter plot where data points are replaced by circles. The size of the circles, or the bubbles, is a measure of the size of the variable. As usual, the Oxy Improving Visualization website is a good place to look for examples. Um, you'll probably see there is a problem that people who use bubble charts, especially in the media, often tend to put far too much data into them. And there are some good and some not so good examples uh, here and and other places you can search for them in the web. Bubble plots can be done in Excel, although few people use them. Uh, when we think of a scatter plot, we assume two variables, the X and Y values. Excel scatter plots need three variables, the third determining the size of the bubbles, which is a bit counterintuitive. Um, in Tableau Public, we can easily make a bubble plot with two variables, but we'll also be looking at how a third variable can be used to step, step through several sets of the data. This is the data we're going to use. World Health Organization statistics on global and regional per capita food consumption from 1964 to projected values for 2030. Uh, this we just copied from the web page and pasted into Excel, and the data pasted in quite nicely. Uh, that's quite unusual. Often uh, quite a lot of formatting is needed to get the data into shape uh, so we can use it. Even so, of course, we still will need to transform the data for use in Tableau Public. But we'll talk about that when we look at the practical aspects of this. The bubble plot will be based on energy consumption for each of the regions. But we can also use the time periods as a third variable to move through the data in a time sequence. This can be really useful in highlighting changes or consistencies in the data and will help you tell your stories about the data. So let's go into the software and see how all of that works. Here's the data pasted in from the World Health Organization website. It's going quite nicely. Um, there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to get rid of the title and the footnote. And we also need to have the data starting in cell A1. And so I've already done that. So I've got a worksheet here called Consumption. Um, data starting in cell A1. And everything that isn't data has been removed. You notice I've put dates in quotes. Okay, 1964 minus 1966. Or dash 1966 isn't really a date. That is, um, this is a hint at a slightly larger issue in that Tableau has a bit of a problem with dates. Largely because Excel doesn't understand dates. And I'll probably come back to that in a later, work, a later video. But for now, we want to transform the data for use in Tableau. So I'll click on the Tableau tab. And the reshape, reshape data button is there. Let's click on it confirms that we want cell A2, which is the first cell containing actual you know, numbers in this case. And I click on OK. And it produces the usual transformation of data. It's slightly peculiar, but it works nicely in Tableau Public. Let's put in a couple of generic column headings, which is it's a good idea to fix. So we're going to call that one period. And we're going to, in this one, paste in kilocalories per capita per day. Right, so we'll save that and we'll minimize this and open up Tableau Public. Uh, find the file we've just been working on, pick it up and drop it in. And as usual, we'll ask us which worksheet we want, and we want Consumption Tableau. And we click on OK. Right, the information comes in nicely. Now I'm going to show you a little trick now for deciding which chart types you can use. If you click on the Show Me dialog, you come down to the different chart types all grayed out. So what we want to do is plot region against kilocalories per capita per day. So I'm going to click on region. Uh, not a lot happens. We can use a table, which is sort of useful, but not in this case. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and press kilocalories per capita per day. And immediately a number of different chart types we can use are highlighted. Uh, we're going to use bubble charts here. So I'll click on bubble charts. And it brings up this. Now what it's done is create here a bubble for each region uh, 
and the bubble a bit it seems a bit arbitrarily sized we can find out what it how what it size is it should be based on kilocalories per capita per day so we pick that up and drop it in the label it'll add that number now it's adding numbers that are much larger than any of the numbers in our table because as usual tableau has aggregated the data that is it's added up all the information for example for all of the transitional countries okay so we, all we need to do is disaggregate the data which you do in the usual way go to analysis and turn off aggregate measures right now we get this interesting and colorful little thing in this case we've got a bubble for each region for each time period which is quite confusing what we want to do is be able to step through the time periods and that's really easy to do so what we're going to do is go to the, over here the shelf and pick period and drop it onto the pages shelf and now we get a couple of things happening we've gone back to only having one bubble for each uh, region and we've got this little control here which starting off in 1964 allows us to step through the time period so if we click on button take this 1974 and onwards and onwards until we get to 2030 we can drag it we can do it manually that way and drag it back we can also do it automatically by clicking on that button so that's really useful you can control the speed at which you step through the uh, time period by clicking on, on each of these buttons it's set to the middle speed at the moment right okay that's not bad when we when we look at this sort of thing what we're trying to do is highlight important changes in the data or important things that haven't changed very much um, at the moment we set up for the colors being based on the different regions it'd actually be more useful we have them set up on kilocalories per capita per day so we pick this up and drag it on the color shelf and we get this happening tableau public normally defaults to this sort of quite boring i guess uh, different shades of green so the darker green is countries that have the highest number of kilocalories per day the paler green is countries that have the lowest number of kilocalories per day we can probably make that a little bit more easier to see by changing the colors so we'll go over here highlight this drop down menu and go to edit colors right under palace there are a wide range of different ones we can use uh, red blue divergence one we're going to use it's, it's quite nice so if it's red it's towards the lower end of kilocalories per day if it's blue it's towards the higher end we can also have step colors which can be quite useful so in this case i've clicked on it's got five steps going from red all the way through to blue we'll click on okay and our data is transformed remember we're still back in 1964 i will notice there are only two regions with blue transition colors countries i beg your pardon and the industrialized countries if we step through these we we'll see that gradually changes over time so we get the current uh, period about 2015 so a couple of years from now everyone's sort of blue or gray apart from sub-saharan africa uh 2030 there's really only sub-saharan africa which is left towards the lowest end of the spectrum now if we go back into the world health organization's page for this uh they have quite a lot of information you're talking about it more things are saying is developments in the availability of diet your energy and point out the changes not however been equal across all regions the per capita supply of calories has remained almost stagnant in sub-saharan africa and has fallen a bit in countries in economic transition now we can get this from the table uh, the information is there in the table but i think you'll, you'll agree showing the information dynamically in the way we've done here is perhaps a more powerful way of, of uh, illustrating these changes Okay, thanks for listening. I'll be back again shortly with the third installment of this series. Bye for now.